So if you ask most people to pick the famous Looney Tune characters, you'd usually put down Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Tweety and Sylvester, and most of the time, people will put the Tasmanian Devil on that list. Which is kind of a surprise to find out that out of the 1,000-something theatrical shorts, Taz was only in five, whereas characters like Bugs, Daffy, and Porky all surpassed 100 each. His popularity is understandable, as he is like no other character ever put on screen. First created by Robert McKinson back in 1954's The Devil May Hair, pinning him up against Bugs Bunny, this cartoon was filled with laughs and screams. However, the then head of the Warner Brothers cartoon department, Eddie Selzer, insisted they don't produce any more cartoons, saying that he was way too violent of a character. Yeah, this guy really did not understand cartoons, but we'll get into that some other time. But for now, Taz's fans spoke up for him. Apparently, the head of Warner Brothers, Jack Warner, got tons of fan mail asking for the return of Taz. So McKinson put four more cartoons into production. After hearing that, I'm actually kind of surprised they only made five, but his popularity grew way beyond the theatrical shorts, with specials, merchandising, and his own TV show spinoff that I reviewed last season. This tape here includes all of his five original Robert McKinson shorts, four of them going up against Bugs Bunny and one against Daffy Duck. The Bugs Bunny ones are alright, Blank does his usual great job, but this was the 1950s. Bugs had already been popular for over a decade now, and his outsmarting adversaries kind of became second nature to him. The one thing that made him stand out was, as I said, his adversary Taz was like no other adversary he ever went up against. However, the one Daffy entry, Ducking the Devil, changes things up a bit. Daffy is running from Taz, only to find out that Taz's capture is worth $5,000. Now it's Daffy going up against Taz, finding out that he gets subdued with music. So it's gag after gag of getting music to play while walking him 10 miles to the local zoo. As expected, every one of his music choices goes wrong, but every single one of them gets a laugh. I especially love the bagpipe joke. I won't ruin it for you here, but it's very mean-spirited and quite hilarious. Truth be told, I kind of wish they pinned him up against other characters. Like, can you imagine him going up against Pepe Le Pew like they thought he was a cat? Or can you imagine him going up with Sylvester assuming he was a mouse? Not really sure how they could have done it, but these writers could have figured it out. They did team him up with Yosemite Sam in Daffy Duck's Fantastic Island, where he was the first mate on the pirate ship. That was a hilarious setup. But for the original shorts, these five are all we got. And since these tapes usually include six cartoons, they actually had a tack on the Tasmanian Devil segment of the 1979 Christmas special. Yeah, you might remember this special being played in Lethal Weapon. And hey, that makes Lethal Weapon a Christmas movie too, huh? We should watch that with Die Hard. Seriously, Die Hard, Lethal Weapon, and the Tasmanian Devil Christmas special. Best action-packed Christmas ever. At any rate, these shorts are good enough for a recommendation. Tez may be an acquired taste, but his originality is enough to make them well worth a watch. I'd give them three ducks, but Ducking the Devil earns it a fourth. Check him out for a fun time.